So this is an introduction to Dresh for site builders or anyone else who just really wants to know about this cool thing they keep hearing about, Dresh. Um, oh, man. Every time I practice this, it's worked until now. It's typical. I'm um, Karen Cassio, better known throughout the Drupal community and pretty much anywhere on the web. You can find me at Tech Girl Geek. So you check, connect with me pretty much anywhere using Tech Girl Geek. And I'm trying to figure out why I'm not connected here. Let's try that one more time. Um, I'm a back-end developer working at Atten Design Group in Denver, beautiful Denver, Colorado. Um, we're a internet strategy design and development company, so we do the full gamut, working for NGOs and people doing great things for all over the world, um, mostly nonprofits. We're also hiring, so if you're considering moving to Denver, Colorado, come see me or Lydia at our booth and drop off your resume. We're growing our team. It's a great place to work. So where does the name of my meetup come from? Do I really need it? I gave a presentation similar, similar to this at a meetup um, in Denver, or actually in Boulder, Colorado, a few months back. And somebody raised their hand and asked me promptly, Drush, do I really have to use it? Good answer. And I told that person, and as I'm going to tell you, I'm not gonna even answer that. I'm gonna go through the presentation. I'm gonna let you answer that by the end of this, it, end of this um, presentation. And if you still think you don't need to use it, then I didn't do my job right. Ugh, this is so frustrating. <laughs> We're supposed to work. Oh well, what do you do? <laughs> um, so how many of you have heard of this Drush thing? Awesome. Uh, how many have used Drush? That's a pretty good number. Hopefully I won't bore those of you who've already used it. Um, and so we're going to talk about why to use it and do you really need it? Absolutely really need it. Whoops. Man, I cannot believe this didn't work. It's so sad. <laughs> So basically, Drush, what does it stand for? It's the Drupal shell. So it's running Drupal commands through the shell. Um, if you go to Drush WS, you can actually find all these definitions. And of course, these slides will be posted and the session recorded. Um, so it really comes in three main parts. And it's the project management section, which kind of allows you to manage your project. So it's managing your, the, your modules, what's installed, how to install it, and installing things, disabling modules, enabling modules, upgrading modules. Um, then we've got Drush Core, which is plus it's managing the core parts of the of the of Drupal, obviously, and then the SQL commands, where you can actually write from the command line, get straight into your right into your database, or you can actually run queries right from the command line. Ah, yay, I got it. <laughs> Finally. Yay. <laughs> How do we get to Drush? Drush is a command line tool. Um, I heard rumors somewhere that someone made a UI for it. I've never seen this. So if anyone's seen it, has anyone ever seen the UI for Drush? I, I, I think it was like two years ago there was a rumor it was actually coming, but I've never seen that, and I don't know why you'd want it. <laughs> um, if you're on Windows, there is a good link on how to get it installed on Windows. I've never successfully, successfully ran it in Windows. I also don't run Windows often, so can't really talk to that much. Mac OS is terminal. If you're in Linux, obviously, you're usually on the terminal, so it should be accessible pretty easy. 
Installing Drush, this session is not going over installing Drush. I'm going to do a boff from 1 to 2 at Dressing Room Congress Hall, and we can go over different ways to install Drush. Um, bring your ideas, too, if you know, but right ways. There is no one way to install Drush. Pretty much like everything in Drupal, there's multiple ways to install Drush. But there are the recommended ways, of course. Um, of course, if you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself because it's all command line stuff, you can always talk to your system administrator or somebody on your team. They'll make sure they help you. So some of the things we're going to go over is downloading, installing, and enabling modules, which is probably some of the biggest pain points and takes some of the longest times in the UI. Um, updating sites, not having to go through and update, and disable everything, update. Can be a really long process. Drush can make it super quick, super easy, backs everything up for you. Clearing cache, and if you don't know what caching is, that's holding all of your fun little things in memory. And if, if you know if you're building a brand new site, as things get changed, you have to clear those caches often. And it can be kind of a pain getting to the performance page, finding that button, I'll show you how to do that in one fail swoop. And some other fun things is like archiving your sites. And then we'll go into, a, if we still have time, we'll go into a few more advanced um, things about cr creating like aliases, so shortcuts on getting to certain things in Drush. But that's more advanced and that's kind of, I'll have it in my slides so you can refer to it if we don't get to that, but I want to make sure there's time for um, questions if you have questions later. So site building in Drush. Um, how many people just abhor and <laughs> dread going to that modules page? I know I do. Okay. If you don't already, I'm going to make sure you do by the end of this discussion. Because <laughs> it can be really daunting really fast. Um, how about updating sites? That's kind of scary. How many of you have let a couple of those little security updates slip for a while because it's going to be a real pain to have to update those modules manually? Come on, admit it. You've let those slide, see? So let's take a look at what it takes just to update a module. And first of all, I'm going to mute my screen. First of all, we're going to do it manually. And basically, all we're going to do is install views. But I'm going to start with, I've already downloaded the tar file for views. Sorry, this is a little small. Most of them I've redone, but this one I didn't. <laughs> so I've already got views downloaded, as you can see. So now we're going to go back to the UI and create a little demo page. Now we're going to bring up the modules mod model, modal. I can't say that word. <laughs> now we have to go through, and we're going to go and find our views so we can enable it. But we can't enable it because it's got a dependency. Uh, we need to go ahead and get CTools, which I haven't downloaded yet. So now I need to go to the project page for CTools. I need to find my CTools, and I'm going to have to download the tar file. And I use a little tool called wget. If you're not, not familiar with the command line, you may not know wget, but it's basically downloading it from the command line. So I'm going to pull it down. Now I'm going to untar it. Excuse me. Now I'm going to go back to my module, mod, modal, and I have to refresh the page. Now I'm going to look for ctools and look for views and enable them again. And we're going to save our configuration, and now they're enabled. <laughs> now, mind you, that's on only two. You just started building this site, and you know that you have 10 modules you want to um, enable. It's, that's going to get really tedious. You have to go through, and you have to make sure the dependencies are available. So these are the, the steps I just went through. And of course, it's, you see, rinse, repeat. We're going to assume we've done it. We're going to unload it, 
uncompress it, enable it, find the dependencies, rinse, repeat. And you have to keep doing this, right? And that very quickly, that modules page, as we know, gets incredibly long and finding stuff. And sure, there's modules that can make it a little cleaner, but it's still, it gets daunting. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like in Drush. We're gonna go ahead and download the views. And I'm gonna go ahead and enable views. Whoops, but I have to spell it right. I used a flag, which is a switch, the minus Y, and it's telling you everything that you ask me, just go ahead and do it. So now I see that it found that it needs C tools, so it got, went ahead and went and got C tools for me, and it went ahead and installed views UI. Um, <coughs> and we're gonna go through the PM list here in a minute, but it, I wanna see, did I actually enable it? And sure enough, there it is, it's enabled, and C tools. So what's that, two minutes versus 10 minutes or five minutes? Right away, you've just saved how much time? Yeah, I'm showing you, you can do it the same way. And we clear our screen. Um, you can do, right, it's done. <laughs> um, you, can, you can chain those together. So you could literally have a line, so you could do drush, DL or PM download, dash download, you can have six modules spaced by, as long as you have the name spelled right. <laughs> That's the key. So you sometimes still have to go to the project page and you still have to find exactly the spelling. If it's underscore, if it's just one long name. But apart from that, once you've got that, you can string as many together as you want. Makes it a little faster. A lot faster. <laughs> now. Let's say, whoops, what, what, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Anytime you see the dollar sign, that's me representing a prompt, in case you didn't realize that. So you can also uninstall and disable and uninstall modules the same way, super fast. You don't have to go through that list, disable one, and it's like, oh, wait, I can't disable views because, or can't disable, see tools without di disabling views, or I'm sorry, the other way around. <coughs> it's, you have to make sure all the, all the dependencies are met. We can do this. It can, I actually did one the other day. Um, we moved a site live, and we realized that we weren't gonna run Apache Solar, so I wanted to turn off Apache Solar. It, I did not have access to Drush, so I had to go through the UI, which I never do. 10 minutes later, I'm still trying to find dependencies, because I couldn't, figure out like the screen didn't refresh or something. It, it took me quite a while where if I had the command line, it would have been one command, I would have been done. So let's really quickly see what it's gonna take to disable our C tools and views. Basically, I can disable them both at the same time. Again, I've given it the minus Y switch. And it disables all of them. So if I disable views, it's gonna disable views UI because it's a dependency. If I disable C tools, it's gonna dis disable views because views is uh, dependent on C tools. And then you uninstall it and then you can delete them. The PM uninstall, there is no shortcut and I've, you, it doesn't do the dependencies. You have to do one at a time. Which is what you see me doing here. Now, getting help for Drush. Um, what if I forget my commands? Is there a way to get help? Well, of course. It's command line. It's, <laughs> it's something in Drupal. You think it's documented? 
it actually is, is incredibly well documented. Um, if you go to um, Dresh.ws, that website has all kinds of great examples, great documentation. Um, it's, actually, it's actually kept up to date pretty much. So if you're looking for a good resource, there's Dresh.ws, there's the IRC channel pound Drush. But you can also do some command line stuff and get help, which we'll go ahead and do a short demonstration on that. So Drush help is just basically going to give you every single command that's available in Drush. <coughs> and there's a few of them. <laughs> um, many modules also have Drush install, Drush components. So like if you install features, you'll see a bunch more Drush options if you do Drush help. So here I'm just kind of scrolling through all of, the, all of them. It's going pretty quick because there's too many to go over. Individually? Did you see there's one or two things you can do with Drush. So I am just literally hitting the tip of the iceberg in this presentation. Don't, if you think this is comprehensive or you're going to walk away and just completely know how to use Drush, there's no way. Feel free to go home and play or back to your hotel room and play. <laughs> oh, sorry. I actually meant to pause that. Oh, sorry. Sheesh. I guess I didn't know how to go through that faster. I'm sorry. Ah, darn. I'm going to do a quick repeat on some of that. The second part of that is, going, is actually going through the Drush download or PM download help. I missed the prompt when it started doing that. I thought I could stop it. <laughs> At the bottom of it, so anytime you do a Drush help, it gives you everything, but you can then you can do Drush help, a command where I do Drush PM download, and it gives you the switches or the flags that you can do for any command. So like PM download, I did, I did, I piped it to more, so you can see it goes more slowly. And sorry, <laughs> this is not going slowly. So right here, Drush help PM download. And I'm telling it to go to more so that it goes a little bit more slowly. And it's showing you the different things you can do. You can set, set a destination. You can change the name. You can download a different version of a module. You can download the whole of Drupal, which we'll show later on. And at the end of most um, commands, you'll see an alias. So drush pm dash download, you want to type it shorter, DL. Uh, so another one, drush help cache clear. Like I said, you'll, you can clear cache building a new site every hour. Most of the switches have to do with what you're clearing. So cache clear and <coughs> no, adding nothing, it'll give you a choices. So you could clear menu cache, or theme registry, or actually Drush, um, clear, actually clear cache of Drush's own cache. And see, CC all does exactly the same thing. Sorry about that. <laughs> so some basic things to know, some basic commands. Um, Drush cache clear, which we just went over. Something I use multiple times a day. Drush up, and I'll show you a little update um, demo here in a second. Great way to update mod modules super quick. You can, again, update multiple modules. Um, in my demo, I'm gonna sh only show you one, but if you basically typing Drush up in return, it goes through and it gives you every single thing that need, it checks every single module on your site. And you can do just security updates, just core, core and modules. I never suggest doing them all at the same time. You wanna go ahead and do it in pieces so you can roll back. And Drush is really nice and does backups for you. You can actually update just the database. So if you know you've just done something and you just want, need to check the update the database, Drush update DB, 
or up DB, does the database from the command line. You don't have to go and find the right command. You don't have to log in as user one. It's all working as user one on the command line. Drush ULI or user login. If you just do Drush ULI, it's gonna log you in. It gives you that one time prompt and it gives you user one. If you wanna test as user 67, you can say Drush ULI and another username that's on your site and it's gonna give you that one time login link for that one person. So you can log in and test one of your users without having to go in and change their password. Um, yeah. So you're playing with your site, you know you're gonna make some huge changes but you're scared you don't wanna break your site and you wanna be able to roll back really quickly. Drush Archive Dump or Drush ARD does an archive of every single one of your files, the code, and the database into one big file. So now you can you have a backup. You don't have to sit there and worry about, oh my god, if I break this, every, I'm going to have to reinstall everything. You can actually play around with your site, and then you can do an archive restore ARR and put it back to where it was before. Now I know how to do it properly. And Keynote failed me again. Curses to the person who said this is going to save my life. <laughs> so project management commands, and I went over those a little bit. You've seen a little bit of that in some of my demos with the, the list and updates. It's pretty, but the project management commands helps you manage your project, your project being your site in this case. Um, a PM list, lists of all modules available on your site, and there's kinds of fun switches we can do with a PM list. And PM info, information about modules available on your site. So one of the switches we're going to look at is um, dash dash core or dash dash no dash core. So I want to see site modules, the status of a module in core or status of a module that isn't a core module. Let's see what this has got for us. Here's our little demo. Trash PM list, and I'm doing it outright at first. Let's see what we can do with it. So we can find out what, which ones are enabled, which are not enabled, if it's a module or a theme. So we're going to look at all enabled modules and themes on the site. Now let's see. <laughs> All enabled themes, which is just Bartik and 7 right now. I did uninstall it. It's not enabled. They're not enabled. Oh, you know what? This I did, but they're not necessarily connected. Like I did them in different orders. So at the time that I did this, recorded this demo, views was still enabled. Huh, yeah. It was just out of order. Good catch, though. <laughs> but yeah, had I done it in a different order, it would have shown them not there or uninstalled. So we already went through PM download, which is probably one of my favorites. And PM enable or EN, enable, enable your module. Again, you don't have to go through that hugely daunting module list. You can find every single module in the views UI, in the views stuff or in features. And you can enable one at a time. You can enable one of them. If you enable one that has a dependency like if you enable views UI and it said, and views has not been enabled, it'll enable the views for you. So, incredibly useful. So let's look at how to dr download the whole entire Drupal. Can you do that with Drush? Absolutely. Another great thing you can do with Drush is you can update itself. There's a, actually a self-update of Drush. So when you see Drush is updated.
Whoops. <laughs> Pretend that it didn't already exist. <laughs> That's all it took. I just downloaded it. I'm going to go ahead and rename it to something else so that I can use it for whatever demo site I'm going to create right now or dev site or whatever else. Now I update my host file. Um, update, yeah, update HTTP conf and my host file. Set up a database and I'm ready to start. Blank database. Five minutes. I'm up to a new, I've got a new site going. Little faster than using the UI. Just a little. So, as I said, I was gonna show you how to update sites, because I know that can get to be really daunting and frustrating and exhausting. <laughs> and, well, daunting. <laughs> Especially if it's a whole Drupal. I mean, the instructions say go through and disable every single one of your modules, which now means if you have more than one, you have to remember which ones were enabled. And then you go and back up your site. You want to put your site into maintenance mode, which you probably should still do, but hopefully you're doing all of this. If it's actually a production site, you're doing this all through Git, and so you know by now if it's going to break. You should not be doing this straight to a production site. That's, that's my caveat. I'm going to give you my disclaimer now. <laughs> um, so if I was going to do this manually, I'm downloading the new module, uncompressing it, I have to log in as user one, update the database, et cetera, et cetera. Or we can do it with Drush. This is just a module update that I'm doing here, but like I said, you can do security updates, you can do core updates, you can do theme updates. So I went through and I looked, it looked for updates and it found that I needed to update Devel. Um, I gave it the, the, the minus Y switch, so I told it go ahead and answer yes to any of my questions. And then it went ahead and it updated the database. So this is a whole, a second step that would have been a whole nother step and you would have to go log in as user one, do the update the database. It did it for me. Now I need to make sure, go ahead and test my site and make sure that it didn't break anything and then I'll update it through Git to the production. Whoops, is that supposed to say in screen, insert screencast? Does, uh, does Drush up uh, put your site in maintenance mode in case I have a maintenance mode? No, Drush up does not put it in maintenance mode. Like I said, you sh shouldn't ever do this directly on a production site. Yeah. So it should be very well tested. And then that way when you're doing it to a production site, literally you're only putting it in maintenance mode for maybe maybe half an hour, literally just to pull your changes and update your database. Well, it's done. It does not, um, but what it does do is it does update everything. So in your home directory or your site's home directory, like if you're logging in as you, like even user in root, it's gonna, there's gonna be a dot drush directory mm -hmm. and in the dot, 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 dot Drush directory, there will be update directories and or backup directories, and it actually backups backs up your modules, so you can at least replace, re return. But if it's doing a database update, yeah, that makes it a little bit more difficult to roll things back, obviously. So variables. Um, does anybody or does who knows what a variable is on your site? Anybody? Nobody? Yeah, some sort of? <laughs> okay. So var variables, variables sorry, are basically bits of information stored permanently in the database. So things like your site name, um, location of your site, um, like the site's email address, um, information on last cron jobs, like I was saying. So a cron job is jobs that are run on a scheduled basis that do things like send out emails or check for updates, things like that. Um, there's certain information about crons that you need to know and if you're writing the code, you'll write code against check if the last cron ran this today and if it didn't run today, make sure this happens at least once a day or something like this. Um, crons tend to get stuck and I'll give you a little 
hint is something to look for in crons. If, if you ever get that crons already been running and you keep getting that, I can show you, we'll show you something you can do to unstick your crons. Um, you can actually change the name of your site through variables. Um, some things like that. So you can delete, you can use this, it's a vset or a vget or a vdelete, variable delete. You can actually delete your variables on the fly on the command line. So we're going to go ahead and do this demo. And I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to re record this one, so you got to look closely. <laughs> so I did a drush vget inside the site, so I have to be inside the site. And it's giving me every single variable that exists on my site. And this, so I just did a vget for cron, and it shows the like Unix time of the last cron. If, I, if you ever see cron underscore semaphore, and your site is stuck, you could do a v delete, and this one, I'm just showing you what it was, cron underscore semaphore, and that, will uns that actually takes, so that's telling your system cron is still running. You go ahead and delete that cron semaphore, and, now, and then go ahead and try to run cron again, and it will not show stuck anymore. It, because we've told it you're no longer running. So there, I just deleted the last time the cron ran, so it doesn't think cron ever ran. Use drush cron, and it runs cron successfully, and it's showing me again that the last cron is showing up again. Um, so if you're running, if, you, if your developer, or you as a developer, writes code against um, cron, if you do a drush cron to test it, now you just made sure that cron ran, and now you can see if whatever that code you wrote to make the happen of cron ran. So this is one way to check it. Oops. So how many of you ever run like SQL queries against your database or even play in, in the database at all? OK, cool. So I'm done. Make sure I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> Sorry. So sometimes getting to MySQL can be a pain if you not in there. So you now you have to remember the name that you used for your database. You have to remember the password. So maybe go into your settings file, because usually it's hard coded in your settings file. Copy and paste it out of there. Try to remember it. Can kind of get to be a little daunting or time consuming just to get into MySQL. So if you get to your command line, change directory cd into your site, or you can do a drush minus l and your URL, or as we're going to talk about here in a minute, you can set up an alias to get you to your site. So if you just do drush sql dash c, um, cli or sql c, it puts you right into your database. <laughs> doesn't ask for the password. It passes the username and, pa and password of your database, gets you right into the database, you're right into the right da database. You can actually run a SQL query right from the, d from the command line. So if it's a super simple query, select star from node where node ID is one, two, three. Right there, you, can, you don't even have to get in your database. You can do it right there. Um, I've actually dropped databases on purpose, promise, <laughs> from the command line. Um, created new tables, created new users. It, it can all be done. I try not to do complicated stuff from command line just because I'd rather be in the database and really see it. But you can if you want to be that daring. Um, you can do a drush SQL dump, which is going to basically dump your whole entire database right from the command line. Or a SQL sync. Um, using your keys, you can um, sync your database from your remote site to your local site. And here where you see the, the at prod and at dev, that's syncing from prod to our development server. And that's using aliases, which, I, like I said, we're going to talk about that here in a minute. 
<coughs> Excuse me. So the Josh SQL Connect, I actually don't like that name, command name, but basically this basically connects to the database and you can, if you have a dump that you want to import into your database, that first command will actually take the dump and it imports it into your database on the command line. Just make sure you're in your site or you have uh, using your alias. Um, like I said, Drush Sync will sync. We're pulling our database from our dev server in this case to our production, or from our production to our dev server in this case. And SQL drop, that's dumping your, just dropping your database. So if you want to rebuild it. Some, some more advanced cr um, commands we talked about was Drush cron. We've already talked about that. Running those scheduled um, jobs whenever you want, not having to go and find, waiting for it. Drush site install, you can use that to, to install using a specific profile. And PHP val, so if you have a piece of code you want to run against your database, uh, or against your site, you can do a um, Drush PHP eval and actually take a piece of code and see if it's going to work against your stuff before you actually write it into your code base. And so Drush and aliasing. Um, like I said, aliases are like shortcuts. So instead of writing out this big, long, extensive command line trying to get to whatever you want to do, this is less writing more productivity. Obviously, Drush is, well, that's what it is, really. It's just making you more productive with much less typing. So the shorter you can go, the better, right? <laughs> um, that's pretty much it. So basically, you can take that whole long command, Drush URI, which is identifying what my site name is, um, as and the root side of my root, and then I want to get the status of, of my site just to drush prog st. A few more less characters, the less characters the better, the faster we're getting to our, to our final product. And here's a quick alias demo, and I'm sorry you can't see that. I didn't get a chance to redo this one. <laughs> So this is a site, and it's giving me all my aliases files. It shows me where the root of my file system is. Now I'm, now I'm not inside my, I am no longer inside this, the directory where my site lives. If I do a status, it's just giving me the Drush status. It's giving me Drush, the status of Drush. But if I do my alias name, prog, dot, local status, status, <laughs> it's now it's giving the status of my site. Um, so this basically means that I don't actually have to be in my directory structure of my site to get the information. So I could be anywhere and be like, oh, I need to update cron or clear my cache. And I don't want to have to go see the <laughs> sites, Karen, da 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 da. I use aliases. I use aliases a lot because I have a lot of sites going on my site and I'm sure if you're here you're probably building more than one site and you probably have a few sites on your local or your dev server or wherever it is you're working. So this helps not have to remember where you are on your system. So this is um, an example of what an aliases file would look like, a really basic aliases file. Like I said, if you go to Drush WS, um, that has all kinds of examples, really good examples for building your own aliases file. And again, these, these slides will be available for review. So basically this just says that my aliases file, this is for my alias prog, prog site. Um, that's my URL of my site and that's where my files live. And this is great for my local site, one site for this system, right? And um, 
If you're going to come to the Drush Boff, if you want to look at talk about aliases, I can show you some of my aliases files, and I can help you build one if you if, you, if we have time. Okay. So if I want to create um, one for my re remote, this is basically the same thing. This is basically in the aliases file again, and I've given it. Um, this will access the remote server. So this is actually not on my local site. This actually doesn't exist. I just made this for the demo. But pretend I have a remote site belonging to my prog demo. demo. This is how I would give it, get to it. And then you really want to have your, S, your keys in place so that your systems can talk. <laughs> now if you're uh, aliasing a group of sites, and this is what I usually do. I usually have a different alias file for each one of my sites. So in this case, is a prog.aliases.drushrc. And you see that I have a lo location, a lock file, which is for my local, and a dev, which is from my remote site. And how I would access that is the at prog.lock or at prog.dev. So you can actually do one something against one each, so I can do get the status of my local site, status or my dev, or I can get status of all everything in my aliases file is my prog aliases file, which is kind of kind of a awesome tool, <laughs> I think. And even more advanced, we can get into some bash aliasing, and I'm not going to go into all this. It's a little bit outside the scope, but it's there in case you ever want to reference it. So let me ask you, do you really need to use Drush? Does anybody think you really don't want to use Drush? How many think you really want to use Drush? That's what I want to see. Excellent. Um, if you want to learn how to install Drush, I'm going to do a boff at 1 o'clock in dressing room Congress Hall. I guess it's down the hall. I haven't actually found it yet. <laughs> um, and any questions? Yes? I was wondering if I could. Can you, um, actually, there's a microphone right there. Oh. We could. We want to get all of this great information on the recording. <laughs> So I was actually wondering if I could uh, possibly use Drush with the APC cache as well uh, to speed it up. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome, thanks. I, I think it controls mostly core cache. I know I've done, um, no, because APC is an separate piece, so it's probably not, but they're probably command line tools for controlling mm -hmm. APC trunk cache. Because I know I'm like, when I'm controlling memcache, I've always had to do it out of a separate piece. So yeah, sorry. <laughs> Let's use IRC, right? Right. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Hi. Um, <clears throat> do you think it's a good idea to have Drush installed on a production server? Yes. Well, you were talking about it, and are there any risks involved? Maybe. I don't know of any risks. I usually have it mm -hmm. installed for things like clearing cache, checking on the status of, of things. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend doing your updates, obviously, your downloads and updates to production. Um, that's just good practice. But whenever I don't have Drush, every time I don't have Drush, I sit in my office cursing. And it, it's, it was kind of funny doing the stuff that I was uninstalling last week. I was like, where's Drush? Because mm -hmm. it was something we didn't think about. We knew we were going to have to uninstall it, but we didn't before we were pushing it to, to production. Mm -hmm. Stuff was already on production, so now I had to go through and disable Apache Solar. And Apache Solar is not just one module. It's dependencies on yeah. dependencies on dependencies. Mm -hmm. And yeah, had, had I had it on the production server, absolutely, it would have been a three-minute job instead of a 20-minute job trying to find the dependencies and figure out why it wasn't refreshing. So yeah, for clearing cache and things like that, for sure. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. And if you don't, then you set up an alias file so you can get to it from your local. Right. Come to the, can you get to the microphone? Okay, it's, so it's wireless, so we'll move it over as soon as he's done with his question. Cool. Um, 
I think it's possible to uh, cut and pass more command uh, together, or I must have one command uh, a time with Drush. I'm sorry, I missed that. <laughs> uh, my, uh, on the console of Drush, I can I must um, do one command at a time, or I can pass and ca cut and pass some command. Can you? Yeah. Um, so sorry, sorry. you can always do it with a semicolon. So you could do Drush like D, D, DL Devel. Like download, develop, semicolon, drush, enable, devel, mm -hmm. minus y. So yeah, you can chain them. Just use a semicolon between it. Mm -hmm. Just like if you were running co command, um, running writing the code. But if you do a semicolon between the different commands, you can chain them. I have done that before. Uh, it's um, how it's possible to use drush to um, export configuration like variable to. Uh, mm, move some configuration from a site to another. So then you want to do a SQL sync. So you could dump your database and upload the database. You could sync the database from your remote, re your remote to your development server. Because oh, so configurations are all in the database. All entire database or even some variables or something. I'm sorry, I missed that last <laughs> one again. All, all the SQL, all the database, mm -hmm. or even some variables some things, I don't know. Yeah, so all the variables are in the database as well. Um, no, because it's part of the database. You'd have to do a partial database sync. But you could do a vget and find out what that variable was, and then you could go back to your other database and do a vset and set it to the same, so the same name. So yeah, if you're going to do pieces, then you want to do it one at a time. Can you can you move them past the mic over to the end of the table over there? Yeah, thanks. Sorry, Prague has too many stairs, so. No worries. <laughs> um, quick question: Can you run Drush with uh, user one disabled? Because I on production servers, I usually disable user ID one uh, as a security practice. So, hmm. to make it less obvious. Security by obscurity, huh? Yeah, pretty much, but <laughs> it's a layer. I, I can go into that, but it, it is a, a layer. So, just a quick question. Can you run Drush without administrator or user one? Uh, or I do don't think you can, because it runs as user one. All right, that makes sense. Yeah. Thanks. OK. Um, yeah, by default, you can't. And I don't know how you, there's a lot of things you couldn't do with user one disabled. You, you cannot specify using a different user? I think you said that, so. You can if you're going to do the ULI right. to user login, but yeah. when you're actually running Drush, I think you're running it as user one. All right. OK. So, yeah. I'm going to try it out. I mean, you could probably still get into like the SQL commands, because that's not using user one. But if, but things like doing update and things like that, you have to be user one. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. Thanks. Anybody else? <laughs> uh, can you please el elaborate a bit more on process of uh, database syncing between the, uh, getting uh, data from the production environment back to the development or stage environment and then syncing back to, that's, let's say, a, a, a process of deployment using a Drush mm -hmm. as, as a tool? So you need to set up your aliases file to Let's see, I can show you one of my aliases files, actually. Um, not. Where's my command toolbar? Okay. Hmm, Oops. So what you do, you want to have your aliases file to set up so that they talk to each other. And like basically a SQL sync actually pulls from the one database and it sticks it in the new database. So it literally overwrites your database. So you want to sync your files and sync your database. Um, I'm going to pull this over here for a second. Or not. <laughs> Can't see it. Dang it. Oh, there we go.
I can't get to the files menu, dang it. <laughs> oh, and this, so the file opened in front of me on this one. That's awesome. Okay, so bear with me one second here. Um. I'll actually show you a real. Mm, yeah, I shouldn't. It probably shouldn't hurt anything. Let's see. Hold on one sec. I'm going to pull out some dead database names here. <laughs> okay. So this would be my aliases file. too far. Um. This is a real aliases file. Somewhere, I think. Yeah, so that's my low, uh, it's really hard to do this. <laughs> Sorry. Where'd my cursor go? Dang it. I can show you after. <laughs> it probably makes more sense. Um, so here. Um, So here's my sync. I, we don't, well, yeah, I guess for when we're going from dev. So this is, for instance, my aliases, my bash aliases. Ah, lost my first again. Hold on one second. <laughs> Anyways. Ugh, keep losing my cursor. This is my, the bash aliases from syncing one site to the other site. So actually are syncing it, so a SQL sync, don't pull cache for my one, for my dev server, from my production server to my dev server. Or dev to my local actually, in this case. Yeah. Hi. And it's depending on the aliases. If you run it like this, it will make a huge copy of the, uh, the live one down to the development. Yeah. But it overwrite the logs on the development server, and it will also overwrite all the settings, right? Yes. It won't it's just copy. We, um, how do you just copy the content without the logs and without um, overriding the settings we've been building in the development uh, environment? You want to just set up, just copy the files? No, just copy the, well, the, the rsync copies the files. Yes. Yeah, but I want to have the, um, what happens in live servers is people do change content. Yes. Node content. Yes. So I just want to pull the node content to the development environment, which I've been setting up with new modules, new settings, new God knows what else. Yeah, you can you can tell SQL Sync to skimp certain certain tables. Like that system tables and things like dash that. Dash dash data only. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So we can do help SQL 
done. So you could do data only, dumps data without any of the schema. But if it works with SQL sync as well, that would be great. Um, God, if I could only resize this. Hold on a second. I can't keep my, I can't get my cursor. <laughs> I keep losing my cursor. Hold on one second. Let's see if we can, there, there we go. Okay, so let's see if it does drush, help, SQL. Um, no, it doesn't look like it. The logs are the data, right? So it will still go to logs. And you can you can add it to skip tables and that's uh that's that might work. So yeah, you can use the tables key, which will actually give you certain certain things not to skip. Like there's certain cache, caches, like sometimes you don't want to, you do not want to bring over the cache, cache directories because tables, because they're so huge. Right, so you can tell it, it's a little bit more um, stuff you have to put into your config files, but you can tell it which, there we go. You can actually create a database on the fly, you can tell it which, which tables not to, to skip and things like that, so you can do that. Anything else? Any other questions? So please do take time to um, fill out the, the evaluation. I'm really interested in what you think, how I did up here, because, well, because I did this presentation, but I also would like to do it again, and I want to make sure that if there's places I need to improve that I do so, because I think it's kind of an important discussion. Um, I, like I said, I'm going to have the BOF at one, from 1 to 2, and you're welcome to join me, and we can go over how to install Drush. And that's our hour. Have a fantastic DrupalCon, and I will see you around. Thank you. Thank you.